Pereira. Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman recently announced major reforms for public sector undertakings as a result of which many sectors are likely to see large-scale consolidation and divestment of state-run firms. The government will soon announce a new PSU policy which will focus on privatizing PSUs in non-strategic sectors based on feasibility. The policy will in parallel specify certain strategic sectors in which the presence of PSEs in public interest will be mandatory. On this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyze privatization of public sector enterprises. Joining me on the program today are Rakesh Khar, senior journalist, Charan Singh, chief executive, EGRO Foundation, and Jayant Das Gupta, former secretary, economic advisory council to the prime minister of India. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Mr. Das Gupta, let me begin the program with you first. Let's first uh, try and understand and let's uh, analyze what you make of the government's decision to privatize PSUs. I think it's a very welcome uh, step because, uh, first of all, it will unlock a lot of uh, capital and funds for the government, which uh, will uh, be will make it uh, much easier to come out of the COVID crisis. But having said that, it is also extremely important to use all the capital that the government has or the country has, and to put it to the to its best possible economic use. Now, as we know, the, some of the PSUs, of course, have been functioning well. But there are quite a, a few other PSUs, which uh, because uh, of uh, perhaps, you know, lack of infusion of further capital, uh, new technology, new management, they have not been working uh, as per expectations. So this will also, the privatization of PSUs will also unleash uh, the animal spirit, so to say, and bring in public sector perspectives, their uh, improved management practices and make the uh, these uh, uh, enterprises much more productive and which will add to the national effort at uh, in, at increasing gdp and growth okay all right professor so why is there a need to sell psus and what are the psus that are likely to go out of the government control what sectors mo most likely so the question that you asked is a very relevant question in this context. You know what we are passing. And you know the context of the COVID-19, unlike the other crisis, where some countries in crisis, others are not. But in COVID-19, we are all flat, the whole world is closed, and now we have to be self resilient And we have to be self reliant It is in this context that one has to think in terms of selling the family system. And that's where we are. It's not easy. We have been attempting it for a long time whenever the Reserve Bank. In way back in 98, we were thinking that we can sell some of the uh, Navratna. It's a challenge. Time permits, I'll come to that. But right now, to answer your question, because we have to be self reliant, we have to generate our own resources, a time has come to sell our family. Now, the issue is. Why were the public enterprises ever created? And what is the hassle in continuing with that? So my view on that is, the public enterprises were created at a certain point of time to serve a certain purpose. If you remember, when we started our planning in 1951, we were pretty socialist in our approach. No, we never called ourselves a communist or a socialist country. We were a mixed economy. But the planning commission itself is a remnant and reminder that we believe in centralized planning and that is where we started thinking in terms of public enterprises and central control over what will go where, which industry, which plant will be put in which part of the country. That was part of Of course, as we moved on and we spoke about the public control and social control and social responsibility, we even nationalized the back. But the first bank that got national was State Bank of India in 1965 itself. Later on, 16 and 80 others have. So the point that I am making is, at a certain point in the Indian growth history, it was important that the public sector, the government, puts in money to start some industries and promote growth in different parts of the country. Maybe we have served that purpose. Now, what is ailing the public sector and why do we need to sell it? 
actually job the job and employment guarantee which the public sector offers you and shows you that efficiency is not at its very best. The private sector is super efficient because the man at the helm of the affairs with the fuel in that thing, private sector knows his job tomorrow is not as sure. And he has to deliver and he has to show that he can deliver. So that means firstly he is delivering, secondly he is sharing a strategy with you that he will continue to deliver. That's not happening in the public sector. There's employment guarantee and nothing can change. The second thing is entitlement. If I am an officer, I am entitled to a certain thing. If I am not an officer, I am entitled. If I am the MD, I am entitled. This entitlement thing, when the whole country is sagging, the growth is suffering, the public, private banks are getting into losses, this entitlement, despite everything happening, is ensuring that optimal, optimal utilization of resources is not taking place. Now, okay. how long? How long can the government keep bailing the public enterprises? And how? What does the government do? Government doesn't generate money. Government doesn't print money. Government takes from the taxpayer. Then the government faces the same taxpayer in terms of voter every five years. Actually, now every second, third year because the world is united, country is united. So, therefore, the elected representative has to face the same voter, the same taxpayer, and he can question that you have taken my tax and whom did you bail out? And whom you bailed out, there's a bottomless pit. They don't show recovery at all. So, therefore, okay. it is in the interest of the government and the taxpayer that the budget does not support these loss making enterprises. Better to let them go to the private sector, that employment and that guarantee of entitlement should be removed. Okay, all right. Taking the discussion forward now and looking at it from the other side of the coin, Rakesh Kar, you know, there is, let's take up this example of Air India. It's a classic example. We've seen that Air India has come to the rescue of several people stranded across the country and across the world. You know, they have worked as a, as you know, a public service provider, brought back people, thousands of people back home. It's happened in the past as well. That is a classic case of why probably we should continue to have some of the companies in uh, you know, public control. Another an another aspect that the professor brought up was this issue of efficiency. Why can't we have a mechanism in the public sector where we see them being more efficient and also fix accountability? Thank you, Frank. Uh, first of all, you know, before I respond to the Air India piece, I want to take back uh, on the public sector reform story in India, as I have seen it, and I would be happy to be corrected. See, uh, you know, the announcement by the finance minister is most welcome. Uh, I think more than efficiency, anything else, uh, it's about reform. So this is as reformist as it can get. And there are two core macro messages here. I'll respond to your India piece. First macro message is that for the first time, I think government is keen to deliver its promise of maximum governance, minimum government. So in that sense, by involving private sector in a very macro way, in a very big way, with very little restriction, we're getting to that maximum that was promised as part of the manifesto. Second, most important piece is very recent. When the Prime Minister said self-reliance, a lot of people criticized it or construed it as inward-looking, not being modern, not being reformist. So the first idea that came soon after that speech, he made it on May 12, and Finance Minister followed it up on May 17 or May 18, when she announced the PSU reform. So self-reliance from Prime Minister's perspective is not just about inward-looking, it's integrating with the best in the business. When we say best in the business, it means private sector as well. So these are two macro sentiments which define this particular piece. But as we have seen in the last 30 years, you know, post-liberalization, what has happened is the attention lies in, you know, God, God is in detail. So unless and until we see the notification in terms of exactly what is being stated, how is it going to pan out, what is the role for the private sector, how does the private sector look at it, what is uh, the role for, you know, good public sector enterprises, how do we deal with them, it's very difficult to come to a conclusion. It's a great intent, needs to be followed up with some very concrete examples. Coming back to Air India, if you see Air India has been on the table and we have failed uh, collectively to, you know, draw good tutors to it. Uh, you know, using its efficiency in COVID times is a great example to buttress the need for any, any platform, whether it's in public sector or in private sector, to be efficient. 
and coming to you know uh, the call of the duty uh, is something that's a bare minimum. I'm saluting Air India for its service, but this is what is expected of any healthy, nationally driven corporation, whether it is in the public sector or in the private sector. It's important for to see this reform piece, I'll just take another 30 seconds, in perspective. 2004, when UPA1 came into power, we had a cabinet decision okaying 10% disinvestment in BHEL. Then BHEL was doing very good at a very heavy order book. My esteemed colleagues would remember, we have kept that decision in abeyance even now. Then we go down to the second most important reform in public sector enterprises. That's when NDA1 was in power. And we had actual privatization with Balco, Centaur Hotel, and HZL, Hindustan Zinc Limited, you know, happening and private sector actually coming in. We have, you know, both the cases, HZL and Balco, have done remarkably well. Uh, but there's also a, you know, latent story there. We have not been able to shed the government equity, which is still resident there. 30% in uh, HZL and more than 40% in Balco, if I am correct. So it's taken so many years from 2003 down the line for government to shed that stake. But what is important is that the value at which it bought and the value at which it will surrender the existing stake, there's a phenomenal growth both in the bottom line and top line of these companies. Maruti, for example, it started as a government-led company. Today, it's a great example of a successful automobile company. India is driving Suzuki sales globally and it's top line and bottom line. So these are the examples which should help us drive the next agenda in public sector reforms. I use these examples. Now, Air India, it must be an attractive offer for a private sector. To cannibalize it in terms of, you know, creating two or three holding companies may not always be very prospective from a private sector perspective. I mean, right. you have a great story, but a great story will be only a great story to the private sector if only it comes in one entity. There is merit in splitting it up, but then you may not get the best return. I rest my case there. Absolutely. You need, you need to sell it in a complete package and only then it will be attractive enough is what you're suggesting. All right. Since we are here, uh, Mr. Das Gupta, you know, so what has our experience been in the past really as far as privatization is concerned? That's something that Rakesh Kar was talking about. He touched upon it as well. Since you've been involved directly, you know, what has our experience been in the past? I think there are two issues here, and I, uh, for the sake of our viewers, I'd like to clarify it. Privatization is slightly different from divestment or disinvestment. Disinvestment uh, has taken place in many of the public sector banks, for instance, and their shares are being traded. But the control of these banks is with the government. Privatization means that divestment will take place to such an extent that the government will give up its control, either partially or fully, which means that 51% or much more to the extent of even 100% of the shares will be owned by a private entity. So that is the basic difference. Now, the policy, of course, uh, as Mr. Garg has pointed out, needs to be, you know, uh, we need to see the details. But from what has been announced, for instance, uh, in respect of banks, it says that, uh, you know, in strategic sectors, there will only be uh, up to a maximum of four uh, PSUs. So we can, you know, uh, without uh, uh, reading the, the notification which will eventually come out, we can say that perhaps the government also plans to have uh, four PSU banks altogether. Now, that is just a conjecture and, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, thinking at this moment. Now, as far as uh, your uh, question is concerned, I must also point out that uh, divestment of public enterprises shares has started with, uh, you know, about 30 years ago from 1991 onwards. And uh, it got a big push in uh, the NDA-1 government uh, between 1998 and 2004. And the results were very uh, encouraging. The, you know, IPCL, I think, was at that, uh, was divested during that point of time. And uh, there were others, uh, which also Hindustan Zinc has already been mentioned. So these uh, were very good examples. Centaur Hotel is doing very well. So, uh, uh, you know, Air India is, of course, a ticklish question because of its heavy debt. So uh, the point is that, uh, you know, about uh, six months ago, the civil aviation minister had announced that if we want to keep Air India going, it would mean a very steady, you know, erosion of uh, its value and infusion of uh, funds into Air India on a continuing basis just to keep it afloat. Now, that is something which we have to bear in mind. 
whether we should uh, you know keep infusing money and uh, since it is just not possible to infuse so much of funds to make a uh, you know total turnaround we keep infusing small uh, you know amounts of money and it all goes down the drain so that is another strategic consideration which i think would definitely be uppermost on the minds of the government that uh, let us divest it once for all if it is not really of strategic interest so i think the experience on the whole has been very good uh, the second point is that uh, uh, now that you know the decision uh, has been taken it is of a piece with what we have been doing in the past 30 years the emphasis now is uh, i think uh, the added emphasis is now that we will have a few strategic sectors where there will be some remaining psus in all the other sectors we will completely privatize and right. uh, that in each of these strategic sectors there will not be more than four psus left so okay. the government will you know uh, concentrate on governance and it will not try to run businesses it will okay. unlock the capital which is lying locked up it will lead to efficiency gains you know for instance many of the psus have huge factory sheds sheds they have a large uh, you know large tracts of land and when we are talking of uh, you know revival of our industrial sector we will we can put these to very good use so that is just one of the things which comes to mind um, you know immediately but there no. are many other things benefits which can accrue if we privatize wisely and quickly okay all right professor since we are talking about uh, you know since uh, mr das gupta so beautifully told us about the difference between disinvestment and privatization what is the best way forward do you believe do we need complete privatization so that the management also goes into the hands of the private sector or do we need disinvestment what is the best way forward so let me first uh, tell you uh, share with you a few concerns following the discussion we have just had take the case of air india telling i want to sell air india it's a loft looking firm it is over stock it has this it has that tell me who in the right mind will come to buy nobody and that's exactly what has happened now let me give you a counter factor if i say air india the national carrier has been doing lots of social work it has flown on many routes which were hawai jahaz to hawai chappal it has flown into north east which no commercial entity want to fly or doesn't want to fly that many flights if the social part is isolated from the commercial part and the balance sheet and the profit and loss account of the air india has made in a way as far as commercial entity and commercial activities are concerned the air india is as efficient as indigo but because we had saddled it with social responsibility and we had not adequately compensated it for that social response this is the additional cost so if you present the balance sheet and the annual report and the profit and loss account it becomes so apparent to the prospective investor that he can see that air india at the end of the day has the best line best airlines best aircraft it has great amenities and facilities and sheds and it has great terminals at its disposal it is worth i so the point i'm trying to make is the costing part needs to be isolated from commercial operation with the with the social operation if that same principle is used for other public enterprises and the banking sector was just mentioned i did some back of the envelope calculation i can guarantee you the indian public sector bank was far more efficient than the private sector bank and the foreign bank provided you do the costing the way i am mentioning you saddle them with so much social responsibility and do not tell them to isolate their profit and loss account by isolating you can then say this is the cost of social responsibility saddled on to the public enterprise if i right. market value this i give you this money you will find all your public sector banks and profit making and every time that you make them feel like a beggar you throw buns at them and say eat this eat this nothing will be required 
you compensate them properly you mentioned that air india did that great social work and brought the migrants back do you think if you had offered the same requested indigo to do it or british airways to do it they would have charged you a certain amount can you give air india that same very amount and if you do that you will find air india is a profit making in uh, profit making airline because True. we straddle it and do not isolate the last point i want to make on this is the commercial enterprises public sector enterprises anything which is commercial has a single should have a single sole objective of profit making if it is not profit making anybody who is in the saddle should be told to immediately leave within a year every person who is appointed there in the executive position should be asked a single question will you be profit making you offer your head to me if you are not you do not we chop you off if you are you continue for the next year so the objective of any enterprise should be profit making if you are saddling it with social responsibility compensate it with market value mm. then the right thing now coming okay. to the question that you had posed for me what mm. is better this investment or privatization if you are going to tie the hands of the management by saying look the civil servants are the best when recruited they have come through the most difficult test and in this country i doubt if there is any youth who has not gone through the civil test and if made it joined it if could not make it joined at other this will be true for 90% of the youth in our country. right so that's the best when recruited now the problem is the civil servant and one of it is on the panel will tell you they are fire fighting all the time they have so many constituencies to take care they have to take care of the minister they have to take care of the parliament they have to take care of so many other things they are fire fighting all the time now when they are fire fighting you give them a job it is very difficult for them to make a distinction across the line in different activities that public enterprises are the best so, is to appoint a professional board on the public enterprise and privatize it and the board will be told that if their md does not perform the board and the md will have to leave you will find, okay you will find that tatas and birlas will be way behind and these public enterprises which have the assets they will leap ahead provided you professionalize their management and their board and decision making points this taken all right men that privatization is better than this what this investment does the last point i want to make mm, mm. this investment brings in the market discipline but you know that very soon everybody starts saying you know the stock markets behave differently they do not understand everything they start right. discounting the stock market this investment brings in the market discipline but what you need is something more than market discipline therefore privatization is the right way okay talking about privatization rakesh kar will privatization drive this time around be successful especially considering that we are going through an economic slump well uh, frank let me respond to that in three points first of all you know if we just stick to uh, disinvestment and you know bringing in strategic investors and not go whole hog then this is no reform if we've been doing disinvestment for 30 years and we don't learn from our experience and bring in privatization where it is due i'm not saying do a blanket case there is no blanket case when it comes to picking up a corporate entity it will be case by case number one number two we have to bring private sector give it the chabi give it the key to run that and be accountable second i think you know prime minister himself has been repeatedly saying profit is not that bad a, bad a word he has been saying that private sector role in building the indian economy has to be lauded so that private sector has to be enthused to come into play and pick up these very very important institutions as corporate entity now the point is that you know when we talk about social contract or social capital for a corporate entity there is a uniform rule that should apply to all i don't see i think we moved quite away from the era of identifying social contract as a separate usp this has to be enshrined in each and every commercial entity let's not bring pride and undue pride to a public sector enterprise just because it goes to northeast i think we moved away from that private sector airlines have also carried cargo in covid times if they were asked to do it 
so i think you know there is a responsibility factor which has to be brought which has to be manifested out front and people have to be made accountable when it comes to running these companies from a market perspective if we say market it has to be market force in its complete entirety we can't have caveats here on the left and the right we have to allow market forces to operate and as i said if there are you know maharatnas navaratnas then there are mini navaratnas we have to apply each and every company and put its balance sheet on the table and see how it operates and what is private sector looking at in terms of picking up from that particular company lastly i think what is most important is a recent learning that this government has done where i have a ideological quarrel is that you know merging private uh, loss making companies with the you know profit making companies within the public sector ambit you know that i think goes against the grain of privatization i mean you can't you know make a healthy company stick by getting a sick baby added to it i mean this is not i mean this will look very nice on paper that you're doing it and you are consolidating but this consolidation has the great risk of you know uh, bringing in you know illness to the parent who is picking this company so i think when you look at defining a strategic interest uh, you know identifying those psqs which need to be kept out we have to look at you know uh, uh, reviewing that decision it's not always a great idea that a loss making psu gets tagged to a profit making psu and then try and sell them both i'll give a banking example idbi lic is picking up stake in idbi now lic is going through an ipo i mean this is too convoluted this will not appeal to private sector and we should not fault private sector for not picking it up Similarly, for Air India, we we'll have to make a very clean, linear, you know, social contract is fine. You have to look at commercial, as professors have pointed out. It has commercial strength. It has real estate. Then it has also negatives on its, you know. So anyone who is willing to pick it up in one go will have to go with negatives. We have seen a private sector company picking up another private sector company with huge debt. Now, luckily, this government has brought in severe reforms, several reforms in terms of bankruptcy. All those will come into play. So there is nothing wrong with picking up debt also. So debt. all big corporates also have large debt they are servicing them they are or they are finding ways to get rid of it so i let's not be overburdened by the issue of a company having debt that's okay. the point i'm making absolutely points taken okay quick closing comments now from all my guests i've got 2 minutes left on the program so in 30 seconds each the best way forward starting first with you mr das gupta um, i think uh, the first thing is that uh, the policy should be laid out very clearly with all the details the second point which needs to be borne in mind is that the process should start uh, as quickly as possible the mm -hmm. third point is that uh, you know the prices uh, of most uh, companies are down the sensex also is you know going through an up and down uh, uh, kind of a motion and uh, it is likely to continue that way till about 2021 at least middle of 2021 so whatever right. uh, bids etc are offered those should be offer and uh, are uh, you know called for they should you know be opened or negotiations should start only in the second half of 2021 we okay. should not uh, be too hasty and uh, end up selling things you know the f family jewels as uh, uh, some people have put it mm. for uh, a song okay all right professor very briefly limited time the first thing continue with privatization gate step secondly when you put them on sale make a clear distinction of what their strengths and weaknesses are and delineate the profit and loss account as i just mentioned the mm. third point don't make it look like a distress sale in this case you will get nothing live confidently and the final point i would like to make is follow a cafeteria approach tell what all you want to sell whatever we get good bit we decide we make a choice we just don't fall in thought of another thing thank you cafeteria economics then okay after the thali economics go ahead rakesh kar closing comments yeah, yes, from you yeah yeah closing comment we need a separate ministry for this there are too many political terms and you know geographical perspectives attached to these assets if they are assets all of them we need to learn from the nda one create a separate ministry which reports to the prime minister directly if it's an intended reform it must deliver like that second there have to be very clear cut timeline and third i must strike a discordant note there is no great time to decide the market markets have their own whims and fancies we cannot keep waiting for the market to turn very bright you know deals are happening today in corporate sector not only in india globally so let a very transparent timeline be set up there there be a separate ministry which is accountable for the decision taken you remember in nda when also there were disputes there were challenges but we have some great case study and lastly let's not make a maruti model where you know we reduced our control in percentages and we did drag down for years and years nobody right. has time today not even our great friends in japan who who trusted us 
with the Maruti story. It has to be clinical. It has to be surgical. Let go control and let make someone else accountable. If he is able to deliver, let him deliver. If he is not, he will perish. Okay. All right. On that note, then we'll call it a wrap on this edition of the Big Picture. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. What's coming out of this discussion is that most PSUs have served their purpose, and we have to move towards having more efficient models rather than being a weight.